Well, I want to get real quick to uh, our teaching today. I'll take maybe 40 minutes. I've got, um, I've got, uh, well, our series we're doing is, uh, we're talking about hearing the voice of God. Well, for those of you who will be joining us again next year, it's going to be part of the module we'll do about hearing from God. We build a concept of discipleship from Pastor David. And uh, it's basically, it's pretty much the materials that are out there. They're credible materials. And I uh, give credit to him. And he's got some gleaming he's done from other people that have written, Derek Prince and, um, and, and many others that are out there. So these are not just uh, man, uh, uh, you know, brought from a different concept, different ideas. They're all out there, things that you've read, things that you've had before. And so we, we build a concept where we're going to be teaching on... Uh, We've done the inner healing. We've done, we're going to be doing a spiritual warfare, which is part of the discipleship program that we, we adopted. Uh, every disciple must learn how to fight. Every disciple must learn how to fight. Every disciple must learn how to fight. You cannot be in the kingdom and not know how to fight. Actually, Greg Hood was talking about this war. When you go to war, actually, it's not the war of just uh, mere men. It's the war of kings. The kings go to war. In the Old Testament, kings used to go to war. David went to war. Kings used to go to war. And when the Bible says we are the king of, uh, Jesus is the king of kings, uh, you know what? We got the royal blood in us. So we are entitled. We are, we are ex it is expected of us to go to war. And in any case, as we've had on the weekend, the ladies retreat, that we are at war, we are at war. And I sort of mentioned a few things over, over the weekend on Netflix, on, uh, on the media, and the things that are happening right in our very own eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are at war. And so Pastor David is gonna come next month on a couple of Wednesday nights to just to try and uh, not really try, but he will highlight on spiritual warfare. How do you fight? Uh, battlegrounds, he's going to talk about different battlegrounds that you need to have, different uh, dynamics of war, what, how do you deal with a spirit, different types of spirits, he's going to mention them, how do you fight a spirit that comes, a Christian who uses demonic uh, weapons, weaponry, how do you fight that, and there are many others that you will find, and we're going we're gonna to cover that, we're going to deal with deliverance, actually we're going to call the whole teaching, we're going to call it spiritual warfare and deliverance. We'll chat in deliverance there because a lot of people don't know what deliverance is all about. I tell you what, demons are real. Demons are real. Can a believer have demons? The answer is yes, they can have demons. So we're going to cover that. So that's number two, another block of spiritual warfare, of, of our discipleship plan. Another big block of our discipleship plan that we are so proud of is hearing from God is hearing from God. Every soldier must hear from the command base. If you're going to war and you don't have a radio on you to talk to your commander, you will be fighting your own war. Over the weekend at one of the sessions, I started laughing because I mentioned something and it was a bit funny anyway. Not every battle is your battle. Don't go and fight the battle that does not belong to you. Don't go beat, get beaten up. In, choose your battles, choose your war. <laughs> a lot of people go fight other people's battles. <laughs> As, yeah, it's, it's only that it's recorded. But anyway, one of my friends, we lived in Nairobi and, and uh, they had a neighbor was fighting, <laughs> was fighting with his wife. And uh, because his door was always open, I think the wife, the wife of the neighbor went, <laughs> they ran into his house and he somehow find himself in between his neighbor and his wife. And he ended up fighting the neighbor. And this is a brother born again, full of the Holy Ghost. And uh, the assumption was they changed the story that he was the one looking after, look, seeing the wife on the side. Sometimes you've got to choose your battle, see where to fight. See where to fight. Sometimes, you know, this one, I don't want to go poke my nose there. It's going to attract attacks in my family. Choose your battles. Anyway. A soldier must hear from the headquarter. The Bible says the sheep hears, hear my voice and they know my voice. If, if God, if Jesus is a good shepherd, we as a sheep, we need to know his voice. We need to hear his voice. And so that's one of the things you got to learn. The reason why I'm saying we got to learn is because sin 
has separated us. Isaiah 59, the Bible says, the hand of God is not too short to save, nor his ear too heavy to hear, but our iniquities have separated us from the love of God. Every time we walk in sin, because of our sinful nature, we lost that ability to connect back with God. We are big on the three part, the tripartite of a man, soul, body, and spirit. Newton Festus is spirit. He lives in a body and he has a soul. Newton Festus is spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. We had a big training about a couple of weeks ago from Clark Taylor about the spirit man. It is very true, ladies and gentlemen, because your spirit is the one that connects with God. And so it's so important for you to understand that when you're born again, it is your spirit that is born again, is born. So your spirit has to learn to hear the language like a baby. When a baby is born, has to learn to hear the language, understand the language. Hello, somebody. A baby has to learn to walk and crawl. So when you bo get born again, your spirit is like a baby. Has to learn the language of the spirit. Many times we starve that spirit man and we grow the soul and we grow the flesh. And so the spirit cannot understand. That spirit man is very important because that spirit man or that spirit person is the one that connects with it. The, the spirit is more real, is more, is more powerful than the physical. But you got to learn. So the learning part is the one that's hard because it takes consistency. It takes a little mistakes. When a child begins to walk, sometimes they fall. Sometimes they hold on chair. Sometimes you see them. It's not a problem. It's okay. You got to learn it. Once you learn it, you can always understand. The Lord is saying. The Lord is moving. These are the things the Lord is saying. How do you know? Because you've mastered the earth. You will never grow the spiritual stuff without having a goal. Big word that I was taught by a man called Pastor John Smith. When I came to Australia a couple of years ago, there's a word he says, says always have a goal. The spiritual realm always is get, gets activated when you always have a goal. Have a goal. Make mistakes. And then you begin to grow. You begin to understand the language. My kids are learning Chinese. Guess what? They don't speak really good Chinese. But as they continue speaking it over and they watch Chinese movies, they capture the dialect. They capture the words. The more you do it in a language, the more you speak the language, the more you listen to it, the more you get better at it. You understand? The same with the language of the spirit. The more you walk, the more you learn, the more you activate it. Don't wait only on a Sunday. Don't wait only on the conference Sunday, on a conference weekend. If you do it every day, exercise it. Look at the cars. Look at the traffic lights. There's always a language out there. The spiritual realm is more real, more superior than the physical realm. As a matter of fact, the spiritual realm controls the natural realm. So it's a language. So it's one of the big parts we train how to hear the voice of God. Now, the last bit when we do our discipleship training is how to live a kingdom living. And in this one, we're going to have Pastor Greg Wood to do an extensive weekend, intensive weekend, sorry, where we're going to be learning how to be a kingdom believer. Kingdom believer means it's not about me, I personally, iPhone, iPads. It's about how do you live with the mindset of God's kingdom. Jesus, every morning he woke up in the morning when he was here on the earth, physically as a human being, Jesus would go and pray every morning. What was he doing? He was seeking the heart of the Father for the day. What is assignment for the day? Jesus, every morning, would wake up every morning and would seek the heart of God concerning his daily assignment every day. And so that's what God wants us to do is to be able to have a kingdom living. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The word first there is the word proton, which means first in rank. It's first in priority. Seek ye first the kingdom, not a church, not a denomination, not a title. We're in a kingdom age. How do you live with a kingdom mindset? Jesus says, that uh, he talked about him coming to build a kingdom, not, not the kingdom of this world. It's the kingdom of God, the, of heaven. He says, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, may your kingdom come. That's a big story that he was trying to teach. The essence of Christianity, the essence of the church is to bring the kingdom of God and to make it be enforceable here on earth. And many believers have lost it. 
I want to emphasize that because the, uh, let me go back to theology now. Let me, let me just get back to theology. The whole setting of the New Testament was set in the Greek or Roman Empire style. And by God's divine orchestration, God allowed uh, Israel to be colonized, quote unquote, to be colonized by the, uh, the Romans. The Greek and the Romans, they were very good because they laid the foundations. Because of the Romans, the roads were set. They, they made roads. And later on, when Jesus comes to be born, that was crucial for Jesus to walk around and preach the gospel. They built Colosseums. Amen. They build Colosseums. They build uh, community centers. They build places where people would catch up and meet and, and compete. And then there was the Greek. Uh, the Greek people, they brought the language. The Greek was a the language they used at the time for trade. It was a language for, uh, for trade and communication. And so you find the Greek and the Romans, when they came together at the time when Jesus was around, was actually very, very strategic because it brought the language. Jesus needed a language so that he can communicate to the masses. Number two, he needed uh, the transport system, which the Greek empire brought that. Now, when God says, I'm, I'm sending you as apostles, he borrows a, a Roman term for an apostle, which is a messenger. It's actually a Roman term. He uses that deliberately to try and emphasize the kingdom assignment. He says, I'm sending you out, not as just believers, but as apostles. And the word apostle in Greek is the word apost in Roman is the word apostolos. And the apostolos was the messenger of the emperor. The messenger of the emperor, uh, this is Mike, uh, this is, uh, I think Mike Steele from uh, New Zealand brings a teaching about this. I want to give him reference. He says he brings, the emperor brings in, um, uh, he brings, uh, the apostolos comes with a ring from the king, from the emperor. It's a signet. So wherever he goes, he goes in as an emperor's representative from Rome. So whatever he says, is, it carries the same weight as what an emperor from Rome would do. And the apostolos will do this. Apostolos will come in and they will conquer an, 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 a, a city that is not conquered. Or if they found a region that is conquered already, they will make it look like Rome. They will build roads, they will build institutions, so much so, but if you go to the city where uh, an apostolos has gone, you would think that you've come from Rome because they make it look like that. I would use an existence is we are colonized by the British people, the United Kingdom. So our judicial system reflects what's happening in, in England, in the UK, United Kingdom is a kingdom, by the way. That's why you see in the judicial system, you find them wearing the, 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 the wigs. Where did they got, get that from? It's a, it's a British system. Our driving, our driving, we drive the same way as English people, as United Kingdom, because we were colonized. The same concept, what they did. If you come to my country, Kenya, my country where I was born, that was Zimbabwe, you will find the same because these are British colonies. So what they did, they did exactly what the apostolos would do. You go to a British colony in Kenya, in Zimbabwe, no problem at all if you come from Australia because you'll be driving the same side of the road, the school system is pretty much the same. The language is pretty, we speak English. You'd be amazed by the English, the, the, the quality of English they speak, apart from a few pronunciations, as we all have had, we joke about it many times. But the pronunciation is the same. The judicial system is the same. It's why, because when the colonizers came, they made it look like United Kingdom. So the apostolos assignment was like that. So when Jesus says, I'm sending you out, not as believers, not as Christians. I'm sending you out as apostolos to go and conquer, number one. Or if there's a city which is already conquered, I want you to make sure that that city looks like Rome. Are you guys with me? Uh, sorry, I'm just digressing a little bit just to drive in the point home. It changes your mindset about church, about who you are. So it's... It, when they do that, the education system, the military system, the, the judicial system looks like the, the mother country. Now, the apostolos, when they travel, they used to travel with a, 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 a vehicle called a ship at the time, used to be called apostolic. It's called LIC. And the apostolic was a ship built to travel, to carry the apostolos, the messenger. 
And that sheep looked like a scorpion in shape. And right at the end of the tail of the scorpion was the armory. Are you still with me? Are you guys listening to me? You guys with me? So the armory was right there. In other words, if you don't listen to the soft diplomacy, there would be hard power, military. The armory was right at the tail of the scorpion. So that's how they used to travel. So when Jesus says, hey, I'm sending you out as a apostle, I'm sending you to conquer. And that's why the prayer says, may your kingdom come as it is in heaven. He says, make sure as you go, I'm giving you power. He says, serpents, scorpions, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Whatever you forbid on us shall forbid in heaven. It gives you power. I've given you power. Exosia. Do not miss. Hello, somebody. You're apostolos. You're representing hell. Whatever you say, you don't say like what the prophet said in the Old Testament. Jeremiah, that says the Lord. Uh, 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 you know, all these guys know you speak as the Lord speaks because the Spirit of God dwells inside of you. And so you conquer a city and you make it look like heaven. Your house looks like heaven. Your community looks like heaven. So that's the assignment. So what we're going to have doing in our discipleship training is how do we train believers? Not to be believers, not to be church members. God does not want you to be a church member. <laughs> the intention of Jesus dying on the cross and saying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabakidani, was not to make you a church member. Not to have a membership in membership programs. Nah. It was to make you apostolos. He's heavily in the heaven high, has heavily invested in you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It takes you back to Adam. You shall have dominion and power and authority over birds of the air, the plants. <laughs> if you get it, it changes you. Because it's not about me. I'm a member of Waterbrook Church. I'm a member of Lutheran Church. I'm a member of this mob. I'm a member of this group. No, it's got nothing to do with that. It's a kingdom mindset. And that's what God is, the church age has come to an end. The denomination age has come to an end. We are in the kingdom age. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers vile, violence. And the violence shall take it by force. It's a kingdom, not a church, not a denomination. It's a kingdom that suffers violence. And the violence shall take it by force. And so it's a kingdom mindset. So our discipleship program, we're going to get into that. It's a big thing. I love it. I enjoy it because it moves you from self to begin to serving others. How do you release the kingdom of God? Is washing the feet. Jesus said, all power in heaven and on the earth is given to me. The next verse, it begins to kneel down and wash their feet. Can you imagine somebody saying, all power, all, not some, all, A-double-L, -L, all power in heaven. United Nations, all the planets, they're all under me, diamonds, gold, silver, they're all, I got them. And then with the same breath, he says, after saying that word, he kneels down and washes the dirty feet of these fishermen, people walking on dusty roads of Jerusalem. That's the most humiliating thing because that assignment to wash the feet in a Jewish homestead was only given to the least of the least of the least of the least servants, slaves. Jesus takes a towel and does that. After making that big statement, say, all power. In other words, for you to release this kingdom power, kingdom authority, exousia, that do not miss, then it comes through serving diaconos. How do I wash the feet of my city? How do I serve? Through serving, power is released. You guys are so quiet, but I believe you're getting something today. If you're getting it, say amen. So we're going to be dealing with that kingdom. And I'll, I'll ask my friend, Pastor Greg, just to jump on that and do an intensive weekend next year on that. But it's amazing. So we're going to, tonight, I'll just jump on. So inner healing is part of the big deal because there's two types of war. There is inside war and then there is outside war. Uh, so the inside war is what we deal with. 
uh, the stuff to do with generational and stuff we've been dealing with in the inner healing series and we're still doing it even now every day we disciple somebody or every second day we're doing it and every time we get in it i tell you gets more sweeter and juicier every time so how do you hear the voice of god now well yes last week i did a foundation on it i said to to us that um, uh, it is important for every believer to know and hear the voice of God. God intends that you should hear him. The problem is the reason why we don't hear his voice. One of the major issue is because of our heart condition, because of sin. All, all the time, we're going to go back to the heart. The New Testament is about the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. The new covenant, the new covenant is about the heart. It's about the new creation is about the heart. Ezekiel says, God says, I'm, I'm going to build a heart of flesh. I take away the heart of stone and give them a new heart, a heart of flesh. It's about the heart. God is about the heart. What defiles a man's heart is what comes out of a man. The Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Your heart defines who you are. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock at the door of your heart. Anyway, you can put it differently in your theological thing. I'm just going back to the basic stuff what we've heard before. God always wants to come in, wants to come and regenerate our hearts, wants to come and be a part of our hearts, renew our hearts. So heart issue is very big in the kingdom of God. So one of the main reasons why we don't hear the voice of God is because of sin. Number two is because you don't tune into the right channel. If you want to hear to, to somebody, you got to tune into the right frequency and the right channel. Ernest knows, knows what I'm talking about. He's been in the army. There, you got to be able to tune into the right. If you're using radio call, you need to know which frequency you're tuning in. I've never, actually, I've never used those ear, what do you call them, ear, ear piece. The ones they, they, that, uh, uh, that people use when they don't hear. I'm not sure if you can tune them to something. Can, can, do they have uh, frequencies? They don't have. No. I'll just assume it. if you have them and then you tune them to maybe Japanese, and I'm talking to you in English, you're never going to hear me. You don't have something like that. Anyway, but, but if you tune to the right, the wrong place, wrong channel, you're never going to hear from God. So sin makes us tune to the wrong place. And then to reiterate, I spoke about what is prophecy. This is the definition of prophecy. For those of us who were there last week, prophecy is a word from a word from God. Now listen, there are three sources of a word or prophet, a prophecy or an unction. Number one is from the devil. Number two is from the soul. Number three is from the Holy Spirit. So prophecy is a word from God. Prophecy is a word from God given to the right person. Because you can have a word from God, but if you give to the wrong person, then <laughs> you're giving to the wrong person. In the right time, giving in the right time. You got to give the word in the right time. That's prophecy. With the right attitude and motive is a word from God. Let me just read that to you. It's a word from God given to the right person in the right time with the right motive and attitude. What does it mean? It means sometimes you can give it with the wrong motive. Every time you give with a monetary motive, then you become a charlatan. You're a false prophet because you're, you're looking for money. Are you with me? A word from God, if you're writing, you're not there last week, a word from God given exactly as God gave it, a word from God given exactly as God gave it. Don't add it. Nothing more, nothing less. Given to the right person at the right time with the right attitude and motives. You've got to have the right motives. Why are you prophesying to me? Do you looking for my approval? Are you looking for my intention? attention? If that's the motive, then that's not a word from God. Hello, somebody. A word from God given, uh, given exactly as, as God gave it to you, uh, to the right person at the right time with the right attitude and the right motive. 
And then we looked last week about um, uh, spiritual guidelines to prophecy. What are the spiritual guidelines? Number one, we read uh, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3. It must be, it must stay within the boundaries of the prophetic gifts, which is comfort, edification, and encouragement. Comfort, edification, and encouragement. We always say to people all the time, write the prophecy that God's given you. Write the prophecy that God gives in. You know what? Some of the prophecy God gives you may not make sense. I always say this, if a prophecy from God makes sense, then it may not be from God. Most of the times I say this, prophecy that God gives you, a word from God, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's beyond your budget. He tells you, you're going to build this, you're going to serve this. You go, my goodness, my budget is... And that's what God does. I want to refer you again, cross-reference to um, Graham Cook, get some of his materials. And Graham Cook actually talks about stuff that God speaks. Sometimes when God speaks and it looks like it is, because sometimes God is God's timing is not our timing. I'm just trying to dive yet. Jesus looks at Lazarus and he says, this sickness is not unto death. What happens later? Lazarus dies. Was Jesus a false prophet? No. But he said, this sickness is not unto death. Another one. Joseph comes up and says, I had a dream. And he says, I'm going to be the head. Next thing that happens to Joseph is being betrayed by his own brother. Immediately after declaring the word of God. You know why? When you declare a prophetic word, the enemy also hears it. The demons can hear it. That's why after every prophetic word, there's always going to be attack because demons can hear it. As soon as, soon as it is verbalized, as soon as it is, is verbalized, immediately the enemy can hear that. Guess what? The attack starts to come, which can work for your good anyway. So Joseph found himself in the pit, found himself in Potiphar's house as a slave, and finally found himself in jail for three and a half, three years or three and a half years. Why? Because sometimes when you receive a prophecy, it goes like, oh my goodness, it looks like it doesn't make sense. I became worse the moment I received the prophecy. Number two, it should not be directional. So when you're learning to prophesy, getting a word from God, we always encourage people, don't make directional prophecies quickly. Don't always say, God says to me, go, you're moving to uh, uh, Taiwan. God's telling me you're leaving your husband, you're leaving your wife. Don't make big directional prophecies. Okay? We always encourage people to write down and pray through it. Look for somebody who is a bit more mature or a, we always say spiritual oversight and let them go through with whatever God has given you. Always take to them to judge and, and pray through whatever God has given you and guide us if it is a big directional word. Another one, prophecy must not take the place of the written word of God. Anywhere where prophecy takes a written word of God, you're going into a very dangerous territory. Okay? Where you begin to talk about the, uh, the uh, what do you call them, the planets. And uh, <laughs> you begin to see things that are outside the word. That's very dangerous now. So prophecy must not take the place of the word of God. We encourage everyone to go back to the word. You know, get the word of God. So prophecy must not, must not take the, the place of the word of God or the inner voice. I put that in there. The inner voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. You know? So some people always look for prophecy all the time so that they don't read the word. You don't read the word. You don't pray yourself. You're just looking for prophecies. Move from who is coming next. It's like a slot machine. You put ten dollars, ten dollars, twenty. It's like the old jukebox. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. The oldies are here. You know, put whatever music you put in your dollar. <laughs> you pray, you play a song, and then you dance to the song. You know, we look for pro. You put your head there, and then you nowadays we have phones. We record real quick. Where are they going next? They're going to this. Church. You move again from church to church. From meeting to meeting, you follow this quote-unquote prophet to here. 
I say this all the time. Prophecy must not bring information. Prophecy must bring confirmation. Any prophecy you receive must confirm what you've been hearing. It is not information. It must be conf because the assumption is you've been wake walking with God. God has been speaking to you. Remember, God is spirit. Connie is spirit. When so Connie walks with God every day, there's that they always hang out. There's always there's something about God she picks up. She may not pick up the whole picture, but there's a little glimpse of you know nuggets she can sense in her spirit because she's a spirit being. You understand that? So when a prophecy comes, you say, Oh my goodness, that really confirms something and it is like a puzzle. So prophecy should not be information, should be a confer mention of something already built in your spirit otherwise you'll be fueled by prophetic words moving from prophecy pro to prophecy but not reading the word you don't read the word you don't journal you don't pray you don't seek god and hear god by yourself so prophecy should not be a substitute from hearing the voice of god are we together if you're writing down please write keep writing number four it must it must line up with both the written word of god and the spirit of the word of God. Prophecy must line with the written word and the spirit of the word of God. It must line up. Aliens. I saw an alien coming and the alien was coming. Nah, yeah. No, 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 no. It must line up. It must line up. Every prophecy that you receive, and that's why we encourage our church members, if you're watching later, it's a recorded thing we're recording, make sure you write your prophetic word. Write it, look for a spirit. Don't just believe and receive. We're living in times when everyone is looking for prophets to believe and receive and claim it. No, 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 no. You gotta write it down and look for your spiritual oversight. If you're in a church for your pastor and let them go through with you, pray through and see what God is saying through it. Are we together? Judge a prophecy. It's okay to judge it. It's okay to judge it. The spiritual platform, the scripture, the scriptural platform of prophetic ministry is mentioned in First uh, Corinthians fourteen one. Number one is love. Uh -huh. Without love for God and man as your motive, prophecy can be destructive or empty. Your prophecy or releasing prophetic word for those of you ministering, the the foundation thing should be is be the love of God. The agape should be the love of God, and I we teach on discipleship. Love is not weakness. Love is not allowing everything to happen to you. We're going to learn that uh, next month when our friend Pastor David is going to be teaching about spiritual warfare. One of the tools of spiritual warfare is actually the fruit of the spirit. Galatians five twenty two, love. Patient, joy, peace, kindness, long suffering, those are the fruit. You can use them for spiritual warfare. And love does not mean you open up your house and just be free and allow people to walk over. You know, it's being firm. It's also being firm. The enemy has 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 distorted that word. I know, and it's all it's just messed up. So, but there has to be a love inside of you for that person. Remember, God is love. God is love. You got to love that person, love the people. Prophecy must flow from that place of love. Number two, from a place of comfort, edification, and encouragement. First Corinthians 14, verse 3, you can read it later. You know, must come from there. Number three, it must come from a place of self control. Self control. Self control. Galatians 5.23, I'll try and read that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 23. I'm trying to make it a Bible study, not a preachy, a preachy service. Um, I've got about 60 ways you can hear from God. Here I'm ready to share with you. If you're tuning in, stay tuned. We've done this over and over and over and over and over. We've gleaned materials from our friends. I've got materials from our friends that have ministered to our church for the last 12 years. And we've used them in our mission trips when we travel. We equipped our team. So for those of us tuning in, it is something we've done over and over. These are practical ways we can activate. There's a session where we get to, where we activate our teams through the five senses, how to hear, how to discern. 
and how to understand the voice of God. Are we ready? Galatians 5.23. I'm just opening my Bible. Stay with me. Galatians chapter 5 and, and, and verse number 23. I'm, I'm, I'm actually reading right now the book of Galatians. Uh, for those of us that joined prayer meeting on Monday and, and on Tuesday, uh, man, this is a gem. It's gem. It's amazing. <laughs> I've been doing a synopsis and uh, just a bit of a, a run through the book of Galatians. Uh, actually, the first letter of Paul, many believers be believe that, uh, uh, many theologians believe the first letter of Paul was was uh, the Salonians. Others actually believe it was Galatians because they look at it and they say that uh, it was written uh, before the church council, Jerusalem uh, church council because of a few things that he addresses which were later uh which were later addressed by the jerusalem church council amazing stuff guys uh, i've been touching on that every morning uh in our prayer meeting so galatians chapter 5 verse 23 this is what the bible says that um it says gentleness and self-control there is no law and against these things so one of the things you gotta look at is gentleness self-control titus chapter 1 verse 8 if you're writing another one Titus chapter 1 and verse number 8. I love the Bible. Beautiful reading the Bible. I recommend you guys to read chapters and chapters. Can I give you a little bit of a, a lesson? Do you know when Paul wrote, when Paul wrote the, the book of uh, Romans, he wrote these letters. Do you know there was no chapters? Sila there. Do you know there was no chapters when he was writing the letters? So when you read... Don't look at when they put the heading because some of the Bibles you have, there's a heading there. Don't look at that. Read as a letter. So when you read chapter 7, that goes to chapter 8. Go to chapter 7 and chapter 8. Goes through that. God begins to move differently. You look at it and say, oh my goodness, amazing what God does. Because it is chapter 7 leads to chapter 8. Chapter 7 leads to chapter 8. And chapter 8 leads to chapter 9. So when you're reading Romans, don't just read chapter 7 and say, I've done Romans. No. It builds up Romans 1, Romans 2, Romans 3. It's a letter. By the time you go to chapter 8, when he talks about the Holy Spirit and adoption, there is therefore now no condemnation. In verse 28, which is so profound, it says that uh, the, uh, all things work together for good. You gotta understand go to verse seven. Why does he talk about it? Many people when they read, they go to verse chapter eight and then they read. Amazing stuff, guys. It gives you a bit of his his case, what he was building his case about. Titus chapter one and uh and verse eight, if I can get there. Titus chapter one and verse eight. Real quick. Titus chapter one and verse number eight. Self-control. We gotta look at self-control. Number eight says, Titus chapter one, verse eight. He says, rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home, and he must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live devout and disciplined life. Talking about the, um, uh, 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 he's talking about, uh, uh, what is he talking about? The elder in the church, but is referring to self-control. Another scripture there is Second Peter chapter 1. And verse 6, I'll read that for you again. It says that uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 6, he says, And knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patience, endurance, and patience, endurance with godliness, self-control. When you're ministering the gifts of the prophet, prophetic uh, gift or your prophesying, self-control is so important. All the time, try and use self-control. Now, I'm going to be careful to talk about this. Uh, how does prophecy come? I've got 60 ways which I can share, but today I'll just lay a foundation because of time. I'll give you an appetizer for next week because that's where we're going to start from. How do prophecy come? Many people receive words. You can receive words. Remember, man is spirit. Glenda is spirit. Always remember that. You are spirit being. You're a spirit being. Mashakarabos. <laughs> you are a spirit being. I know where I'm going. I say this in the morning prayer. I know where I'm going. I'm going. My future is coming to me. 
I'm actually not going there. Jesus is my future. Paul writes in one of the letters, in, in paraphrasing, he's literally saying the, 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 the past has invaded the present. Jesus is the past. The past has invaded the present. And the future is coming to us. If you ask me, where am I going? I'm going to Jesus. Always, don't look at where am I going to go? I'm going to, where he will be, that's where I will be. Jesus, that's my future. My future is Jesus. My present is Jesus. My past is Jesus. <laughs> Changes you, everything. That's why eschatology in the Jewish term is not really a bad thing. Every time they talked about eschatology, I don't want to get into the definition of theology about it, was a, it's something they looked forward to, was the coming back. I cannot wait. It's not a doom and gloom. It's excitement that I'm going to be with my Savior. My Lord. It's something to look forward to. Hello, somebody. It's not a doom and gloom, bad thing. It's good. It's like I'm looking forward to meet my, the church's bridegroom, our bridegroom, to be with my Savior, my Lord. That's what it's all about. And so, one of the things you got to understand is when you read the word, how does the word come? How do the prophecy come through the word of God? Sometimes you get words, you get words, you get words, you get words, you get words. Some people get words, some people get just a phrase. Mm -hmm. You can get a phrase, but just like a child, you gotta learn. It is something you gotta learn. You gotta learn. You gotta learn to do that. Number two, how how it comes. It comes through um, a sense. Let me just read that. It comes through a sense of a message. So you get a message. Some people get a message. That's how a prophecy comes. Some people receive colors. You know, people get colors. So you always say, God, show me a color. And the colors will come. There are more than 60 ways which I don't want to preempt right now. I'll start next week to show you how to deal with that. Now, when you receive a prophetic word and you're young, you know, you don't know what to do. You know what you got to do? Is number one, try and write. Try and write. Try and write. Write it down. Always write it down. Look for somebody to interpret for you, to help you go through it. Try and write it down. Try and write it down. I've heard some people, they struggle. They want to hold the mic and, and say, that says the Lord. And the other thing I've always said to our teams, don't be quick to say, that says the Lord. This is how we phrase it. Say, I believe the Lord is saying. I believe the Lord is showing me. Always phrase like that. Try and phrase it like that. You know what? In case, you know, it doesn't happen. <laughs> you didn't say that, says the Lord. Hello? In Australia, they come and tell you, God told me. Whew, that's scary. You know why they do that? The moment somebody tells you, God tells you, it's like they're telling you, I'm, I don't want to hear your comment. And I can share so many stories about that, that path. Where somebody comes and says, God told me I need to do this. Like, hey, I'm just informing you, get out of the way. But I tell you, I've had stories where people have done it and they come back regretting, but I can't do anything. You can't redo the harm. And a lot of people, because they fear accountability, they use that word. But God told me I need to do this. Because they don't want accountability. It's the same word I used before. And I'll send the notes to you, um, Glenda and, and Edith. It's the orphan spirit. Because of an orphan spirit, people, you know, can I tell you this? One of my friends was saying this, I can't remember who was saying this the other day. The, the most powerful, listen to this, the most powerful four-letter word in war, you know what they are? The most powerful four-letter word in war help those are that is the most powerful four letter word when you are in war 
doesn't make you small, doesn't make you miserable, doesn't make you look bad, but it's a good thing. Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? The Bible says the Holy Spirit is your helper. The Holy Spirit is your helper. The Holy Spirit is your helper. It's not bad to ask for help. The reason why people feel bad to ask for help is pride. Because of pride. You got pride in your heart. So a lot of people don't want to ask for help. Now, when you get a word from the Lord, you get, I'll share with you many ways in which the Lord can speak to you. Just remember this, guys. Body, soul, and spirit. Please, I've got like five minutes to close. Body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. God is spirit. He's going to communicate with you, to you, with you in your spirit first. That's why your spirit has to connect with God. Now, I'll train you. Next week, I'll show you a few things. We're going to try and do some practicals before we get to the new month where we're going to deal with spiritual warfare. I'll try and try and activate you guys next week. But I want you guys to remember this. God will speak to you in the spirit first. And your spirit has to learn the language, just like a child learns the language. Now, when you get stuff, these are things we're going to ask you to do. Avoid too much emotions. Avoid too much emotions. When you're giving a word, avoid too much emotions. I've had people, when they prophesy to people, they begin to cry. Do you know this? there is no scripture in the Bible that says, close your eyes? There is no Bible verse. If you find one, let me know. I'll buy you coffee tomorrow. There is no Bible verse that says you commands us to close our eyes. Where did we get that from? We used to preach in the market and pray for the sick in the market. With uh, a few of you were there, and Mary been very consistent. We used to set up a tent and and pray and do all that. But look at this: when you pray in the market, we used to train and tell anyone, if you're coming with us, don't close your eyes. Because you've been praying for somebody, prophesying somebody who does, hasn't been to the church, doesn't know God. You're there prophesying, I see a tree. I see closing your eyes and spitting on them. Next thing you know, you're busy prophesying on, on, on electricity post. The man is gone. <laughs> He's gone. You're busy prophesying on electricity post. He's gone. I say you got to open your eyes. There's no scripture. There's no scripture. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you find a scripture that says, close your eyes when you pray, let me know. It's no. <laughs> so when you prophesy, always try and open your eyes. Try and just speak. Because it comes from your spirit, not from your soul. Flow easily. And anytime you show emotions, you start crying. Oh, my God. Oh, You know what? You take attention from the Lord. You're taking attention on yourself. These are just very keys we teach on the prophetic. Try not to take emotions on that. Number two, don't embarrass people. Do not embarrass people. When you're prophesying, don't be embarrassing. Don't try and embarrass people when you're prophesying. There are things which you can whisper to them. Don't shout at them. There are things which you feel they're confidential. You can speak to them privately. Are you with me? Don't embarrass. Jesus, imagine gee, God God has got a video evidence of what you're doing, but he doesn't come and tell you, hey, you. No, 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 he's always. Jesus knew all these guys, but he was very cautious because Jesus would read their minds. He knew everything. Are you with me? Don't embarrass. You can say things indirectly if you're saying them but try and take care of the person. The other thing, very little nugget you need to have if you're writing, for those that are writing, God bless you. Be short and simple. Be short and simple. Don't repeat yourself too much. You know, don't repeat yourself. Don't try and repeat and repeat and repeat. It takes too long. Prophecy doesn't need to be long to be effective. Say one more time. Prophecy doesn't need to be long to be effective. 
The next one, stay within your faith levels. Try and be, just use the faith levels that you are in. Don't try and go for big stuff. Just faith level, little nuggets. You can go for it. You know, don't try and be dramatic. The other one, be wise how you touch and where you touch people when you're prophesying over them. So we train people when they prophesy. Number one, your eyes is open. Number two, be careful where you touch them and where you touch them. Are you with me? If it's a lady, be careful. If it's a man, be careful where you touch them. If you need to touch them, ask them. Just a gentle touch on their shoulder is still fine. It still works. So you don't need to touch them. Avoid where you touch. Number, number five, be wise how and where you touch. Okay, that's what we talked about. Uh, sometimes it's not wise to sing a prophecy. I've had some people, they've got no tone, no tune. Their voices are off. They want to sing prophecy. I say, yeah, just close. Have you had people that try and sing prophecy? And they got no voice to sing? You go like, oh man, it's screechy sound. You don't have to sing. Don't have to mimic or imitate. Be yourself. Hello? Don't have to sing. You don't have to sing. You don't have to be Benny Hinn. Just say it. I'll just, I'll just see this. That's it. I'll just see this. I'll see this. If you try and sing, people are going to close their ears. I tell you, you're going to stop demons just by your voice. <laughs> so sometimes, because I know I can't, if I know I can't sing, I can't sing. I won't try and just be off key there and mess up the whole meeting or mess up the whole place, get people slain. So all the time, try and, you know, don't stay within whatever you can. Just say this is what I believe. I see, you, can, you see, that's it. this is how you start, Matt. You can say, look, I just see a red color. That's it. I say, I was praying for you. I see red. I prayed for another brother and, and that's all I saw. I said, look, I'm seeing red. Do you know what happened? Just saying red, the brother got delivered because he was actually abused, sexually abused on, on a red carpet. And that triggered deliverance. See, I didn't go into all oh, and then go into all oh, those. So I just see red. And immediately there was a prompting and he was taken back because God uses memory. Memory is one of the things will take train you guys how God speaks. I'm just preempting 60 ways in which God speaks to us. I'll go through it next week real quick. So the person began just a word, just, oh, I just, I don't know. I'm just seeing this. There's the one person we, we did this exercise and we are, we're breaking into twos. We do, we've done it before with this team. We break into twos when we've had our uh, friends coming. And I, I say, look, I'm seeing just a, a beach. I'm seeing a, a beach and water. And the person says, you know what? I've been believing God for a holiday. That's it. I just see just a beach and water. That's it. And say, so, you know, my wife and I have been believing God for a holiday. I didn't get into all the things that singing it. You sing it, close your ears, you, you begin to <laughs> awaken demons that were asleep. You say, what? what? Another thing, stick to English. Don't go to King James language. Don't go die down. The thou. If Jesus was alive, you'll be talking about, you know, Jesus would be saying, oh man, uh, I believe if Jesus was here, I believe, this is what I believe. You know, I'm, I'm not saying this is an absolute truth. I believe if Jesus would be here, Jesus will be relevant, talking to the things we see every day. He'll be talking about uh, G.Y. Gomez. Yeah. Men shall not live by Gomez alone. <laughs> baritos. He'll be living by Baritos and Baramandis. He'll be using the language. Hey, guys. <laughs> it will be relevant, but you don't go back to the, oh, you know, that says the Lord, dying a doubt. No, 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 you're messing up. I've seen people, they come, prophesy, they go into the King James. God, God is <laughs> going to be relevant. We'll be talking about speed trains. We'll be talking about skateboards, scooters. I believe, I believe, I believe. Hello, somebody. I've seen people, we've had praises. I tell you, I can write a book about it. We've had praises that come. Oh, everyone keep quiet. Listen to what uh, brother, brother, brother John or brother Matthew wants to say or brother Henry wants to say. 
oh, so we're going to shut down, listen to Brother Henry. It's not the Holy Spirit. Okay, here we go. Shuts the whole things down just to get attention. So we got to listen to what Brother 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 Henry has to say. All right. And then he, oh, that says the Lord. The Lord says, this is the time. It is time dying. It is dying. Really, if the Lord wants to speak to me, I'm telling you, you speak the language I understand. My son does not know King James language. But does that does that does, does that mean my God cannot talk to him? He can. <laughs> he met the farmers, he talked about the seed. He met the fishermen, he talked about the fish. Jesus is relevant. It's just religious, you know, thing that's been happening around. Number the next one, don't try and you know, voice, don't, the voice doesn't mean it's from God. You don't have to have a big voice. Even in the name of Jesus, God can still speak the same. It's not the voice, not the audible voice. I'm just throwing in things there as I close. Then in the name, you say the name of Jesus. Goes, in the name. It doesn't matter the voice tone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can just the name of Jesus. Jesus says, it's okay. Huh? Hello, somebody. Don't try and change. You need to have a big voice or oh, no, no, oh, loud. No, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it can be loud. It's okay. But it's good. It just can't speak in normal voice. When Jesus saw Zacchaeus, he didn't say, Zacchaeus, calm down. Calm down right now, Zacchaeus. I'm coming to your home right now. No. <laughs> he said, Zacchaeus, come home. I want to go to you. He's, he's talking. Hello, guys. When you're connected to the real deal, you don't need to show. You don't need to prove. That's what I was talking about. You don't need to prove. That's why I don't need crowds. I don't need number. We just, anything. Mango trees don't fast to produce mangoes. Orange trees don't fast and pray to produce orange trees, orange, orange fruit. It just produces. Hello. <laughs> you shall know them by their fruit. I love this. So don't go around looking for prophecy. You are, God wants to speak to you. He loves you. You're his treasured possession. <laughs> you look like him. You carry God. There's no one special in the world. I want to tell you that. You are special. No one is more special than you. You don't need an arc prophet, arc bishop, chief, apostle, mighty, major, pro don't know. No, 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 no. The same Holy Ghost they have, the same Holy Ghost you have. In the New Testament church, the book of Acts, there was no youth ministry. There was no day, there was no baby, baby ministry. There was no youth pastor. The Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost that came upon the disciples. is the same Holy Ghost that came upon the children and the women. There was no women ministry. It came upon all female and male children. Man. And actually, that's how when the power came in the book of Acts, the power went to other nations that the disciples didn't even go because there were people from other nations that had come to Jerusalem. So they listened to the tongues. That's how some of the gospel went to other nations. They were there in the Pentecost. They could hear. If you read, read the Bible, it says there were people from Arabia, people from Africa. Ethiopia, they could hear. So you don't have to, you know, die, you know. Jesus will be talking about, you know, struck pine, mango hill, calandra, not legs. Jesus will be talking the same thing. Can I have fish and chips here? Yeah. And can you bring tartar sauce? Uh, and make sure there's chili sauce. Uh, and uh, and bring please Baskin Robin. Uh, no, no. <laughs> All these guys, they go cry. Oh, this guy is powerful. No, he's not powerful. No, he's not. Don't be intimidated, guys. Are you with me? Sometimes I get excited and we do. They just excite me, but he's got nothing. Just listen to the content. Oh, don't worry about other things. <laughs> and so, so and so was so powerful. Why? Oh, he was like, ah, can I get fish and chips? I'm going to San get on Friday. No, 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 no. Jesus never did that. Easy. Are you with me? So you just normal voice. And the last one thing I want to finish with is when you're ministering, we train these the teams when we travel. The people that are here, they know. We've traveled with Pasalmina, 
Pastor Robin, uh, uh, Pastor Lawani, all the people have trouble with, they know this one. All the time is normal hygiene. When you go to minister to people, we always say, make sure you have normal hygiene. There are some people who get slain just by just bad, bad breath. Or just, um, we always say that. I'm stopping at there so that next week I'm going to show you 60 ways in which God speaks to us. Because God speaks to us many times, but we don't get it. So the last bit is make sure there's no more hygiene when you're ministering to people all the time. No more hygiene. There's some people just get slain. Oh my goodness. Father in the name of, they just go. So, oh my, it's so powerful. No, 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 no. They're just trying to avoid you. So the only safe place is on the floor. <laughs> huh? Invest in, in, uh, in a few deodorants and stuff. This is basic teaching one-on-one. -on -one. You won't get here anyone. Anywhere. No offering, no worship song. We didn't do any worship song. No offering, no titles. God wants you to hear his voice. Hello, somebody. It can happen like this. You know, what I've learned is this. I can immediately switch off. I've trained my kids to do this. I, I was at the holiday at the week Sunday. They will tell you they're listening to me now. And I immediately I can just close my eyes. And sometimes I can just stop and just immediately I can switch off and I can be. And I can tell them right now, I say, in the name of Jesus, I'm at the feet of Jesus. Because I've done it many times. And immediately I have no prayer points. I've got no agenda. And I just go, Sharabo, Sobro, 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 Sikiribria. And immediately I tune in. I can straight away. In the same time, because in the spiritual realm, there's no distance. I could be in hydro, but straight away. And I begin to pray, Father, I pray for that young man that is going to go on the bridge about to drop down. Didn't send me a proper prayer point, but I'm interceding. And then I go, keep going. I pray for this person that is going to sign in into a, 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 a strip club right now. Lord, hold him back. I go, I go to Korea. I go to the parliament. I go to Ukraine. I go to um, I go to UK. I just start to pray randomly in the spirit. In the spirit, there's no distance. But when I'm in the flesh, I can only be here. And because of that exercise, I get pictures. And when I, I pray before I go to sleep, when I wake up, any dream I get, I write down. I've had dreams about things that have come to pass. My daughter is here. She'll tell you when we went through a big, uh, big test in the church, she was just young. She had a he had a vision and a dream of three people at the time she didn't even know and she mentioned these and these and these guys they're meeting somewhere they're planning this and this and guess what exactly another time we had another massive challenge and she had a dream Nia will tell you she's listening to me right now here as I'm talking she had a man and in the, in the dream that person was called Tom and he said this person he saw this person ripping daddy daddy being naked and she didn't understand what it means. It was a confrontation. And it was right in the heart of a challenge. It was so, the dream was so real that we had to take her from school. Dream, I'll share with you many ways God speaks to us. Nothing happens to us without knowing. I will tell, I will know. I connect, I go, and I tell you. The more you do it, have a go. The more you have a go, the more you understand. Listen, you're, when you're in the spirit, you're much stronger can get in there right now. And listen, sometimes you can, the moment you get there, uh, Nick and Jess normally get headaches and all that. It, it, by the way, it's true. You can immediately start getting, it, it, you, you know you never had a headache, but somebody immediately, you know, there's somebody here who's got a headache. How did you know? Because God, I'll show you scriptures about that. Immediately there's a, you feel there's a pain. Or you start praying for marriages and all of a sudden there's an attack on yours. You know what God is showing you? Pray for marriages because there are marriages which are going through stuff right now. And I tell you, the moment you pray for them, you find yours has come down or things have healed. Because you are intercessor. The word inter means in between. Inter. The inter word intercessor is two words. Inter and seeding. Stand in between and seeding. That's why not many people can put their bodies, their spirit, their heart to intercession. Because you take on whatever hits the seeding. And you're able to be the thermometer to master the temperature of a city or a church or your family. You are the watchman, the gatekeeper. 
we'll look into that next week a little bit in depth and and you get to capture the pulse I can tell you, I can tell you what's going on. I can pick things in the spirit because you exercise over and over, over and over. It becomes like a gear. You become very weird. You see, this guy is weird. Yeah, we are supposed to be very weird because we live in the spirit. And we also live in the physical, both in the spiritual and in the natural realm. This body will die, but the spirit will go to heaven. May the Lord bless you.